it's Melissa. I am so excited to be able to introduce to you this new DTF and DTG printer in one. It's the Epson 2100 and this thing is a workhorse. This thing is going to be the closest that you can get to all in one if you're looking for a printer for garments. So as I said, this can not only do direct to garment, meaning it can print directly to the garment, it can also create direct to film transfers so that you can use those um, on different types of shirts. You can sell the transfers. If you don't wanna apply right away, you can do that. So lots to cover here. I'm going to try to get to the most frequently asked questions so that you can get the most amount of information that you need about the Epson 2100 right off the bat if you are deciding is this right for your business. Now I'm going to tell you right away, this is not a craft machine. So if you are a crafter and you're looking for uh, the best printer to do it all, this is probably going to be out of your price range. This is about a $10,000 investment just to get started with the Epson 2100. So if you are a shop, uh, a t-shirt shop specifically, great printer. If you are a crafter, a hobby crafter, there are going to be other options for you, better options for you. So one thing that um, I want to talk to you about specifically is the difference between DTG and DTF. Where does this fit in? So you have a sublimation printer right now, you know, you cannot print uh, direct sublimation. You cannot press sublimation directly on darks or cottons. So this Epson 2100 solves that problem in multiple ways. Obviously, you can print directly on the garment. So you put your garment, whether that's black, a black shirt, a white shirt, doesn't have to be a shirt, um, directly onto the platen and you can print. It prints white as well. So the white ink is what gives you the ability to print directly onto darks. However, you can also print onto white and light colored shirt. So here's one where it printed directly onto the white shirt. Now, when you are doing direct to garment, you do need to uh, have pre-treated shirts if the shirt is not white. So if you are using a dark shirt, like that black shirt I just showed you, you will need to either use pre-treated shirts or you will need to pre-treat them yourselves. The pre-treat process puts basically a layer down between the garment itself and the white ink to prevent the white ink from uh, being saturated into the shirt. And that white ink is needed so that the colored ink can sit on top of it and have that big, bold effect. So that's what you're getting here. White shirts, however, don't require white ink. And so those shirts do not need to be pre-treated and you can print directly on them. They have no feel. So if you're looking for something that feels like sublimation, this is a really good option. Okay. You can see print directly onto the shirt. This is a hundred percent cotton shirt. Okay. Um, now the other option, as we talked about is direct to film. So instead of putting a shirt or other garment on the platen, you can actually put film. So you would put your sheet of film. I've got a couple sheets right here. You would put your sheet of film directly on the platen and print directly onto that. And then what ends up happening is you get a direct to transfer, excuse me, direct to film transfer. So these, after you put the, do the full process of putting the curing powder on and curing it, you can sell this transfer later. So this is a really, really versatile printer that is going to solve a lot of your cut garment, customized garment needs. Okay. So let's talk about what comes with the printer. Let's talk a little bit about some of the features. So the printer is run on Epson's garment creator, which you will be happy to know, at least I was as a Mac girl, it runs on both Mac and PC. So that is unheard of when it comes to DTF printers specifically that require a rip. So the garment creator, like I said, included free, very easy, very intuitive, gives you lots of um, options for customization, or you can use the built-in defaults basically. Um, you can run on both Mac and PC. One of the great things about Garment Creator, if you want to test it out, you can download and install it onto your computer for free before you even have your Epson 2100. So if you want to just test out the software to see how it works, if you like it, you can do that. If you already have your 2100 on order and you want to get the software going, start building some you know, presets, you can do that as well. So what am I talking about with presets? 
every material, whether that is film, DTF film, whether that is a shirt, whether that is a different brand of a shirt, you will need to use a printing, a print setting, right? So it's essentially, a preset is essentially a set of settings that are all saved. The garment creator, the software, comes with five presets for direct to garment. I am going to give you my recommended preset for Kodak direct to film um, because I had to do a lot of testing to find it. Now, um, Epson also offers their default preset for uh, direct to film. It's not built into the software, but I'll tell you what that is as well in the comments or the description. But I am going to give you what I have found to be the best for Kodak. So how do you go about even figuring out what presets are? Let's say you buy a Bell and Canvas shirt. You need to know what the best preset is, the best settings for that specific brand. So what you end up doing is you print this color density chart directly onto a sample of your garment. So you're going to do this for every different type of brand that you are using, okay? Because it's going to be a little bit different. And then in another video, I'll teach you how to evaluate this and where to put the settings that you find to be the best. If you're doing that on for film, you would print on film and same thing. You would find the best one. And what that's going to do is it's going to make sure that you get the best colors, the best resolution. When you dial in those presets, uh, which can be saved, so you figure it out one time, save them in the software, and then on subsequent prints for that specific material, you don't have to keep doing it, okay? So it's really, really, um, really great so that you have the ability to add your own presets and really dial in to get the best possible print, whether that's on film or a garment. I'm just looking at notes here so I don't uh, forget to tell you anything. Garment Creator includes the ability to import a PNG, a JPEG, a TIFF file. I think it's also a BMP. You have the ability built in to Garment Creator. Again, free and included. Download it now if you want to try it. You can remove backgrounds. So if you have a customer who's like, here's my, here's my logo, and they basically send you a screenshot that has, you know, white around behind their circle logo, you can remove that background very easily in Garment Creator. It also has um, a built-in color changer. It has the ability to, um, has a built-in cost calculator. So when you figure out what your costs are for, oh, my shirt costs, you know, $5, and I, and then you tell it what your ink, the inks are, you know what the inks are, whether you have the starter inks or the 600 milliliter inks, you put that all into the cost calculator. And again, you can save some of this stuff and it'll tell you, you, it's going to cost you $7 and 49 cents to make your shirt. And then you can decide what am I going to sell that for to make it profitable? All right. Big questions I usually get around the maintenance cycle, especially with DTF, especially with printers that print white. So I am going to tell you, Epson does an amazing job of helping you with maintenance, specifically the maintenance cycle. This chart will come with every Epson 2100. And what this chart says is daily, weekly, monthly as needed. And if you are going to put your printer in storage for long term, then it has the actions over here. On a daily basis, this is what you need to do. Shake the white ink cartridge. That means open this panel here, take out the two white ink cartridges, shake them 15 seconds, put them back in, do a nozzle check. What I love about the 2100 is all of the daily maintenance specifically can be done directly on the printer. So you can go through the, the uh, maintenance, get access to the maintenance menu directly on here. You don't have to connect to your printer. I mean, excuse me, your computer, and you can do the maintenance right here. So you want to print a nozzle check, you just go to the menu, maintenance menu, you click proceed, you click nozzle check, and what's even better is you do not have to waste a sheet or a shirt or garment material. You can do your nozzle check directly on this platen, which is included, by the way, this is a medium-sized platen, and then you just wipe it off. Okay, so that's really great. Then the other thing that you need to do is a print head cycle cleaning. That will be done automatically for you. It's going to tell you when that needs to be done. On a weekly basis, for example, I'm not gonna go through this whole sheet, but I'm gonna give you an example. 
You have to do a suction cap cleaning and you're like, ah, what is that? I don't even know what a suction cup is in this thing. Don't worry. This is color coded yellow. We go through here. It tells us yellow weekly, five to 10 minutes. Why you have to do this, what the exact steps are to do it, what is needed to do it. So Epson does a really, really good job of helping you with the maintenance and you definitely wanna make sure that you keep on top of that to keep your printer in good working order and avoid issues because as you know, if you are familiar at all with DTF printers or DTG that has white ink, that white ink can cause a lot of problems if you are not staying on top of maintenance. Um, set up an installation. I have a whole video on this. It's 20 to 25 minutes long. The setup, the printer comes completely intact. Okay. I'm going to tell you the size and a weight in a second. It comes completely intact. You, you need to do things like put the platen on, which this just comes right off. Okay. You need to do things like set up the waste tank. You need to do things like connect the power cord. Okay. There are a couple of initiation steps. There is a couple of steps through, again, through here, the, the touch, it's not a touch screen, but the on-screen menu that you need to do at setup. Setup will take you, if you already have the software installed, which that also takes maybe 30 minutes at most, setting up the whole printer is going to take you, I would say, maybe two hours. And 30 minutes of that is going to be it charging the ink. Which, by the way, this printer uses cartridges, okay? So it's going to come with a set of starter cartridges that are 250 milliliters each. It, the refills are 600 milliliters each. So it's going to, because it has cartridges, that means that it will automatically do the charging for you. Charging is when the ink is pulled through the line that initial time. So you'll just place all of the inks into... There's two panels, there's seven slots for ink because the cleaning solution is also set in there permanently so that it can do the cleaning cycle as needed. And then it will charge the inks for you. That takes about 30 minutes at the initial setup. Again, I have videos on all of this. Um, what else can I tell you? Oh, so the size of this printer. So it's difficult to see, but this actually goes back kind of into a corner. So I'm gonna tell you, I have this sitting on a 24 by 48 table, inch table. There are stands available, a stand that's actually smaller. The printer has six feet underneath. At the very least, four of them, the four outer ones, need to be sitting on, on a base, okay? So whether that's a stand or a table. The entire printer does not need to be supported. So for example, where this platen is, from about here, forward from this part here is extended off the table in in my case okay there's also a back part of this printer which you can't see but when the platen slides back it goes into that area that area also does not need to be sitting on the table so the printer itself 39 inches wide okay about 40 inches wide 39 inches wide by 59 inches long Okay, so that's almost five feet long. But like I said, I'm mine is sitting on a 48 inch table, which is a whole foot smaller. Okay, so you do need to be aware of that. The printer itself, 183 pounds. Once you get it in place, you're probably not going to move it. Although I would highly suggest a table or a stand that's on wheels so that you can easily maneuver it. If you need to move this into a place that has a standard size door, that is something to take into consideration. The printer will need to be turned on its side because it will not fit through a standard door. Again, in my installation and setup video, I have the exact thing that you need to do. You need to make sure it's turned in a specific position. So make sure that you watch that video very, very carefully, okay? The, the, and you'll need three very strong people to position this. I'm not gonna say men, but I'm gonna say you need three people to help you it's a little bit awkward the the layout of the printer um the size of the box is far larger than the printer itself i would tell you that the size of the box is about what i what to me <laughs> looks like the size of a full-size mattress okay it's very large and so you need to take that into consideration for delivery 
Obviously the printer is not nearly that big, but it has a lot of packing. And then it also has two separate boxes inside that same big box where it's delivered. It has the box with the platen, and then it also has a box that has all the ink, the power cord, um, and the clean and the maintenance kit. Okay, so just keep that in mind. It will come delivered on a crate, but it is big, and the box itself, the initial delivery box, is over 300 pounds. So please keep that in mind. If you have a garage or something, that'll be fine to store it in. But again, it's not going to fit in a standard size um, uh, doorway, so you will need to unpack it probably you know, depending on where you need to go. That I think is pretty much it. So if you're looking for more information, how to use this printer, how it actually works, um, the step-by-step -step instructions on using the software garment creator or how to, you know, do DTF or DTG or uh, DTG on non pre-treated shirts. Remember you said that you could do that with white. I have videos on all of that as well. And if you're looking for the best bundles, my recommended bundles, and what you should get with your printer, you're considering getting a printer, what I say you should you should get. It does come with ink, but for example, I would suggest that you buy two sets, a, two, a pack of two extra white ink cartridges. You're gonna use white ink more than anything else if you're printing DTF transfers or on anything but white shirts, okay? So those are the types of things. I have all of that information down below in the description. Um, as well. So I hope you guys got some good information out of this. I absolutely love that it is a combo machine, DTF, DTG together. It is really, if you have a limited space and you don't have room for, you know, multiple different printers doing this type of thing, this is a really, really great option for you. All right, you guys, I'm looking forward to, to helping you get started with your Epson 2100 and I'll see you soon.